Yes, people, welcome back to another episode of Canberra Conversations. And today we are joined by Mr. Ryan Atkin, personal trainer, online coach at Atkin Coaching and member of MTN. Ryan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Pleasure to be on board. Yeah, I'm delighted to have you. And we've had a chat with a lot of the MTN guys so far. And we're adding, we're adding to that with somebody who's got a little bit of a different story and uh, a different expertise and niche. So I think it's going to be really interesting for us to, to dive into that. As any good podcast starts, Ryan, do you want to give us a bit of a background on yourself and how you got into coaching in the fitness industry? Because I know it's a different story to some of the guys that we've had on previously. Yeah, so my story, I've always been involved in fitness from being a young age. I enjoyed PE, um, I enjoyed football when I was younger, but I actually was really good at science uh, at school, and it's something that I, I, I found harder than PE, um, and it's something I wanted to pursue at university. So I went on to study pharmacology with a specialism in neuroscience, and um, really enjoyed that. I mean, it was a challenge, and... For me, it was probably a lot harder a choice than going down the sports route, um, as I enjoyed the sports route a lot more. Um, but yeah, since then, I worked, tried a job, an office job, which wasn't actually for me. Um, enjoyed it, and it was something that put me outside the box, and I was working around doctors, nurses, things like that. Pressureful situations, presenting in front of them. Um, and just after a good while sitting there, I realized, you know what? I need to give it my, it's now or never. I was 20, 24, 25. Um, and I just said, look, I need to make, give this my best shot. And I just went for it, Colin. Like it's something I've been passionate about since I was younger. I nearly didn't go to university, but my mom being my mom said, look, go and get it done. Like go and get a degree. And I did. And I'm glad I did. I learned a lot at uni, how to speak to people, how to interact with people. And that's helped in this business alongside my passion for fitness. Yeah, I think you can see that from the conversations that we've had previously and just the kind of dynamic you give from your Instagram page, which don't worry, folks, we'll link at the end because Ryan's Instagram has been going off recently. So <laughs> it, it, it's, it's clear that your, your background from the scientific perspective and your appreciation for that has overlapped into your approach to training. Now, there's a lot of, I think the quote would be like, evidence-based coaches nowadays, and it's really refreshing. But your average PT in some gyms is still not taking into account the kind of more important factors to things. So it's refreshing that you've got that. And it's interesting that you touch on the role that you did after university, where you were, were you selling into hospitals almost and selling into doctors in terms of yeah, software? Absolutely. It was clinical research trials, so you're essentially promoting the, the trials to the hospitals um, and running that trial, seeing it through, and you're, you're a monitor basically throughout that study, making sure that the hospital's running it correctly. You go out to the site, do your job, collect all the data, and then go back to the office, essentially, and write the report. So yeah, that, it was a challenging job, very challenging, and it's a rewarding job, but it wasn't for me, definitely not. Yeah, the, 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 maybe the passion just wasn't there, but you had this passion for fitness in the background and you've shown in this role that you've got people skills as well, which I think is super valuable. And um, there's, there's a, one of the chats that I have with Alex at MTN, his ears will be burning when we're saying this, is about personal trainers being human, but also having the knowledge behind it to back it up. And that kind of deadly combination of, I know what I'm talking about, but I can relate it to whoever my audience is, is so important yeah. and probably one of the reasons why you guys have been so successful yeah definitely i think just having the people skills which as i said being in the pressureful situations we're in like circumstances at previous work has allowed me to interact better with a wide range of people and really narrow down on my niche actually and know how to understand my market better and who i want to target with my work and help and inspire so yeah, people skills is massive and something I've always, since being young, I've always been a talker and I enjoy talking. And as well as that, can you listen? It's fine to talk at someone, but can you actually listen? Because a lot of the time people come to you and they tell you all the worries, all the concerns, all the stresses of the day. And you, you've you got to listen, do you know what I mean? You've got to be there as kind of help for them. I've, I've had a client in the past that's called me a therapist. Do you know what I mean? I've listened to her that much through her dark times and... um. It's refreshing, do you know what I mean? It's nice to hear that, but it is just the fact I'm good at listening to people and I enjoy talking to people. It's I don't. It's not just a job for me. I want to listen. Yeah, that that's 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 such a hugely important skill to have in any role. 
and I've said this before in the podcast, personal training is a, is a sales role initially to get people in the door. And then from there, it's about being that coach, that mentor, that support network, that therapist to listen to them on their challenging days. And for so many people, exercise is an outlet. And you just have to look at this COVID period where we've had gym closures, where some people have really, really struggled because they've not had that social environment in the gym. They've not had that um, outlet for their anxiety or whatever whatever it is they're struggling with to go there and enjoy themselves and thankfully good coaches like yourself they've adapted and you've kept that online service up to to support your clients but it's still it's not quite the same as as uh, as being in a gym with somebody for an hour and being able to chat about whatever's going on and kind of bouncing that back and forth yeah definitely so obviously when lockdown started that was a bit of a shock at first and my mind did start thinking what am I going to do now I can't I initially thought right I'm going to take my clients outside that sort of thing and then that wasn't allowed and I just thought to myself my goal since I'm sure going to detail further on has been like glutes training since coming back from America and I thought you know what this is my chance now to really build a community that wants to grow and develop the glutes and understand how to train the glutes better, understand the benefits, understand why I feel you should be training your glutes. And um, I built a community of classes, basically, and a private Facebook group. And that, at one stage throughout lockdown, was 240 members. So to have that, I've probably impacted over a 1,000 people during lockdown. And it's been massive for me, like on a, an impact scale, um, especially it's been it's been amazing and obviously I've still been in contact with my one-to-one clients online with MTN we've still been we've been running the fat loss project as well which has been great so we've been impacting so many people and it's just been it's it has been an eye-opener lockdown for me really yeah. really that starting period Ryan was that kind of pause button and think right what am I going to do and how am I going to deal with this but I've seen it from social media there's been some fantastic reactions from from coaches and from with the right offering, the right support and the right um, products to take to the market and also the right free advice as well. And that's something we've kind of breezed by, but you, one of the reasons your Instagram page and your business has grown so much is you've been giving away free advice every day for however long to grow an Instagram page yeah. to thousands of followers. And that free information often turns into clients at the end of the day where they say, he's given me so much. I wonder what's behind the paywall when I when I, when I pay my money. Yeah, definitely. I think what you've summed that up really well there. I think the fact that my Instagram grew from three thousand followers right up to sixteen now um, is because on a daily basis I was giving out content that's free advice. I've even got on my page I've just on today a free workout week. Um, so there's free advice on there daily. And that's because I care and I want to help people and I want to show, do you know what? If you do come and invest in me, I'll show you what you actually get. Um, I'll give you this on Instagram and I'll give you as much as I can. Um, but the next step is, if you, as you've said, see what's behind the paywall. And I always over deliver. I want to get results. Do you know what I mean? That's my goal. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of people maybe struggle with giving out free content because they think they're giving away too much. But actually, you're not. You're helping well, people, how are you ever going to grow if you're a closed book and you're, you're never giving out advice to people? Your business is never going to grow, is it? So people want to listen and know how to grow themselves. So you need to deliver. This is so true. And I think you see at the start of the lockdown, I've, I've had a little rant about this before, where hopefully, not, not hopefully, everyone kind of clearly stepped up and started producing content like PTs I'd never seen post before. And that was great, but it fell away so quickly. Whereas the guys that have consistently done it for a couple of years, they just kept going because it was just, it was business as usual for them, but they just ramped up that little bit. They just, maybe it was an extra post a day. Maybe it was an extra four to five stories. Maybe it was an extra free workout that you were doing with a, with a towel yeah. in your living room, like Dale Burke or whether, <laughs> or, or, or whether it was you doing it. Workouts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The MTN guys, the ears are going to be burning during this, but yeah, we're going for it. Um, <laughs> but I think one of the key things you spoke about within that, number of sentences there was that you care and there's so many people that I know that love fitness and they love training and they love nutrition they love everything about it and they know what they would on the whole what they would do for a client but if you don't have that other ingredient we spoke about people skills we spoke about, and then we're speaking about care then you're not going to be the the best coach that there is the best support 
network yeah. for a client. And it's good that you've underlined that because many people, and we've had a couple of podcasts on it, where people have, have left their full-time job or they've left university or college to go and be a PT because it's their passion. The reason they're on the podcast is because they definitely had that crucial care ingredient, whereas there's so many people that have dropped their job and gone into PT and discovered that actually this isn't the answer. And the, the, the kind of frightening stats that I saw around people that do that six week online course for PT and then go into go to and then drop out of all entirely of working in a gym is so high at the moment. Yeah, definitely. You do see that a lot. And I think I've seen a percentage on uh, line recently about only I can't remember 25 or 30 percent of PTs actually make it past the first few months so yeah. it's 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 a very rewarding job if you care but if you don't care and you don't have the people skills to to it is a people's job do you know what I mean you're working with a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds and especially with the growth of now online and how a lot of people are investing in online PTs and um, you're working with even more people now so you need to be able to work and speak to people um, properly well and listen to them do you know what I mean yeah fundamental skills there and we've touched on it in the conversation already but we're really going to dive in now your niche so to speak is glutes female female training and glutes and there's so much to this conversation because for starters when girls are thinking about their dream body just based on what social media looks like glutes yeah. is one of the first muscle groups that they think of so what kind of led to to this Ryan in terms of you deciding that I'm a, I've got a good knowledge of fitness overall I know I can help everyone but instead I'm going to prioritize helping one particular group with a fairly specific area yeah so um, in terms of um, female training in general that was coming through the results I was initially getting and that's how I kind of just said to myself look I'm going to specialize in female only training which to some people they might say do you know what you've just closed off a massive market there you've just gone no guys like I'm just taking girls do you know what I mean and that is essentially you losing a lot of clients potentially there a lot of people would see that as but for me it allows me to really zone in on what's important to female clients and that is generally um, generally speaking is like definition abs build the glutes and so on um, and feel better mentally I suppose that's guys as well but yeah it's uh, something that I really dived in on. and when we went to America the Dale and David two of the guys at MTN and um, we visited the glutes lab I actually messaged Brett Contreras on Instagram I thought he's got a million followers not a chance is this guy ever going to message me back I looked at my phone later on I was like shit he's messaged me back he just said come along to the gym so I said to those so I was like look we need to go I've got to go to the gym and the glute lab we went we visited and he had he let us in um, and let us train in there and it was brilliant it's only a small facility but what he's got in there he's got a community and when I seen the group he had a big group of girls come in his glute squad I think he called them and there was just passion in there do you know there was they wanted to build a bigger set of glutes and they were just passionate for training and I just said as soon as we left I went this is this is my niche this is where I need to go down and I've got a passion for it and since then building this glutes community online and um, transformations I've started getting and will continue to get throughout this year and um, I just want that to grow and grow and grow I want to be the biggest person uh, for glutes transformations in Scotland and the UK eventually 100% that's my goal so I'll get there yeah that's that's brilliant Ryan because I think that that could be almost categorized as your tipping point moment into I've niched down into female fat loss and female training but I've seen this other avenue which is within this it's a almost even smaller niche but yeah. importantly again the passion comes through in your voice the kind of kind of clear focus that you've got on that area is is really refreshing because it means that you can go into that without a kind of nervousness about oh I'm not sure what I'm doing but you were like no listen I've seen somebody do it so Brett Contreras is the glute guy in the in the states online he is like the authority on it so yeah. there is absolutely room for you to bring that to the UK if you can specialize in it and that's what you started to do yeah exactly exactly and as you've just touched on there as well like to go further into that niche from females fat loss and um, to then go right 
glutes that's even more specific and um, so I've got lots of good plans coming as well especially when gyms reopen I'm going to be setting up small group training I had my classes as well which were glutes classes and um, running every Saturday morning before lockdown obviously and that's kind of why I also wanted to carry carry that on online and impact more people to show them what it's like in the gym when they train with me and then I'm going to be setting up obviously small group training as I've just said um, but in general, I feel like most people I speak with nowadays, it is, I want to build a bigger bum. Like, it is. It's a massive goal of so many people I speak to. It's, it's, it's a desirable uh, aesthetic trait, but we'll get onto yeah. it as well in, in terms of how important it is for, for posture as well. And last episode we had out, not to time date this episode too much, was with Evie Chardon, who is a pole dancer. And she spoke about the importance of glutes for overall posture but also just being able to contort your body in different ways it's a huge yeah. muscle group that needs to be well trained now you've yeah. touched on the, the the group classes ryan and that's something that you and i spoke about in the phone the other day when we were chatting about about what this episode might look like and what kind of value we could bring and one of the things that i was laughing about with you was the initial stereotype when people say I'm going to a group class for my fitness tonight is like Zumba or uh, an outdoor boot camp where you do, where there's like yeah. five stations of like burpees, press ups, shuttle runs and uh, sit ups, or it's like a, a, a spin class at pure gym with an instructor whose face is tripping him. Don't get me wrong. There's some great ones out there, but that, that's, 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 your, that's your stereotypical thought, isn't it? Whereas yeah. you're bringing something completely different to that. And I suppose maybe you got a little bit of inspiration from what you saw at the glute lab in San Diego but what does yours look like? And I'm glad to say that it bucks the bucks that that um, impression. Yeah, definitely, um, I'm not just there to absolutely batter you to the ground or make you do ridiculous amount of circuits in the gym or high intensity work, zumba. I mean, that's all got its place. Don't get me wrong. I'm not completely disregarding that. It definitely has, and some people enjoy it, and that's what matters. But for me, my glutes classes have been about resistance training and getting in. The, the main glute movement patterns so you've got your bridging which includes like your hip thrust your glute bridges single leg work you've got your squat and lunge um, movement pattern you've got your hinges which are like your Romanian deadlifts and then you've got your abducts which is your abductions which is your banded work so you've got the four main glute movement patterns there so we cover that and that's something as well when I start my group training up pretty soon when gym's open we're going to be diving in deep on that um covering all bases really so it's not your stereotypical class uh, but what it does do is get body shape changes and that's that's my goal with my group training is to get the best body shape changes not just calorie burning not just there to burn a few calories and see what you've got on your watch it's about feeling good and going do you know what wow i felt my muscles working then yeah this this is the this is the big differentiator ryan because you're offering a different type of group class where a group of girls can come in to uh, a gym with a, a specialist trainer on a specialist area you go through the four different movement patterns I think we spoke about it you having rather than like the sit-up station the press-up station and the shuttle run station or the, the uh, tire flip or band station you've got your four different movement patterns set up so the I'll get this right hinge bridge yeah. squat and thrust oh no abduction there we go there we go I was close I was close <laughs> There we go. You yeah. can tell I'm a glute specialist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you've got these four different areas set up. And the thing that I like about it and the thing that I think a lot of females find challenging as well is that gym environment can be super intimidating where you go into the rack, you do your squats, you go to set up your hip thrust. And it takes time to set up these exercises because they're not they're not um, the, 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 the most easy to set up. They've got to set up their, their abduction. They've got to set up uh, for some sort of bridge. And it can be intimidating, like, yeah. which, which is a challenge. And I think one of the things that I would be the most praiseworthy of your setup for is they come in, they join a community who all want the same thing, but equally you're giving them that confidence to go away and do it beyond the, the one hour a week that they're with you in that class. Yeah, so I actually go around the class and, and help with form as well. So I make sure that they're doing their hip thrust right. Before the class begins, obviously, I run through every exercise in detail to make sure they all understand, answer any questions. And then we get to work, really. And I'm 
popping around the class. I'm not just there screaming at everyone or like whatever. There's music on, but I'm there going around checking exercises done right um, to prevent any injuries, obviously, and to make sure they get the most from it. Um, as well with glutes training, you've got to remember it's it can be quite embarrassing at first because you're thrusting in midair, do you know what I mean? And there's ways around that, like facing the, away from the gym and things like that. So glutes training in general, it yeah, it can be embarrassing at first, but people just need to get to grips with it and just take it for what it is. And um, yeah, something I really thrive on is helping people and, and getting them the most from that. And it's same with my online classes, albeit I'm not one-to-one, -one, I'm demoing how to do the exercises. And I've actually had people message me say like, wow, the single leg work you touched on and um, how into detail you went has actually helped me with my running, which is my passion and uh, things like that. So the impact's there, do you know what I mean? I just need to keep delivering. Yeah, I, I believe that, Ryan. And I think you can see that straight away you've touched on there that somebody's told you already that the fact that they've strengthened and improved their glutes has overlapped into another area of their life. And that that is ultimately the, that buzzword impact that you want to be having in terms of transforming people's life, both aesthetically, but also beyond that as well. We've We've touched on the four different movement patterns. And I think that's something that, well, for me, some of the very experienced train, trainee I'm not that clued up on. So it'd be good to maybe go into like, what are some of the examples of the, the four different areas in terms of different movements? And I know one of the other things we can speak about is how that differs and how effective that'll be for each person based on a number of factors. Yeah, so obviously everyone is different when it comes to training and not everyone's going to move exactly the same. And a big focus, I think, when you're training your glutes should be mind to muscle connection, really thinking about where it's working. So when I'm running my classes, a lot of the time I'm just... Um, before we even get started is getting people feeling the glutes you know what I mean so the standing glute squeeze is a good example so if I were to just sit here for example and squeeze that's you really connecting with your glutes you know what I mean you'll get a better connection standing up but just really getting used to feeling your glutes working that's the first thing because oftentimes when people first come to me they'll start doing a glute bridge and they'll be swinging the back into it and everything and they're saying I'm not really feeling it in my, my bum and I'm like well this is what you need to do rib cage down blah 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 but um, that's the first step is actually connecting with your glutes and it does take time um, and different exercises work for different people so for me I might get an incredible like connection on a hip thrust you might not you might prefer a glute bridge or a feet elevated glute bridge and you've got to tailor that to that person so don't just think you just because the hip thrust is seen as the number one glute exercise that that's going to work for you. I've got clients at the moment that actually much prefer a glute bridge um, compared to a, a hip thrust. Then you've got your frog pumps, things like that. So tailor the, the exercises to what you get the most benefit from, what where you feel it the most. This is a huge point and one I don't think we can understate because it is so common where you see in a short Instagram post, somebody says the best glute movement is the hip thrust. And overall, the data probably shows that it stimulates the most fibers and whatnot, and that's fantastic. However, for the 20% of people that come to your class that that's not the best movement for, you're in there, you're helping them to understand what might be a better alternative, and you've named off a few there, the glute bridge, feet elevated glute bridge, frog pumps. So it's not like a, one of the big problems I have is prescription without diagnosis. So if you went into your doctor and you just said to him, oh, I've got... Um, this cough and this headache and he just says all right okay take these three times a day uh, i'll see you in three weeks you think what you haven't listened to me whereas you're listening to your clients understanding do you feel this movement do you feel this um how's your technique on this one how's it this one and that is the approach which sets good coaches apart because ultimately it leads to results because if somebody comes to your class and you just said right we're all we're all just going to do squats yeah, yeah these two movements yeah. like they would just think okay, like, and you, even if you don't particularly feel that movement, you would help them get better at it and get to a stage where they get more of a connection from it. But you know yourself that me mechanically, people have different limb lengths, they have different uh, insertions, oh, and it, yeah. it, it makes things uh, so much more challenging. What are some of the other things that you look at then? So we've got, we've, we've covered probably that bridging aspect with the hip thrust and the, or the glute bridge. What about from a squat perspective? What are the different variations that tend to be within your class Squat. So squats and lunges generally cross over. So we've got your standard squats, we've got your split squats, 
Bulgarian split squats, front foot elevated. Um, and we've got your lunges, so reverse lunges, reverse lunges with a deficit. So there's numerous different variations you can tweak for extra range of motion and to get bigger and um, better benefits from that. But in again, in general, each to their own. Some people, some clients I've worked with really struggle with squatting, do you know what I mean? But they're fine lunging. And do you know what? I can't make, yes, we can tweak things to try and get them to squat better and improve range of motion. But do you know what? It can take a lot of time and some people just mechanically move better with certain movements. I know myself I do. And me personally, I get, if we're talking glutes, a much bigger benefit um, from certain movement patterns, such as a glute bridge or a hip thrust. I mean, if you're sitting in that chair now, you're mimicking a squat. If you try and squeeze your glutes right now, it's quite hard to do in it. Yeah. Um, and this is why I always stress like the importance of bridging. And I've done this in my ebook as well. As being should be your primary movement for glutes because if I were to stand up now and squeeze my glutes, you, you get that full full contraction. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, you, if you're not watching this on YouTube, guys, you need to check this out later. Ryan's just showing him yeah. squeezing his glutes. <laughs> <laughs> that, but yeah, so I know that's a different like the squat stretching the glutes and the hip thrusts and shortening the the let the muscle. Um, so of course you are going to get a bigger contraction there, but that's why I like to focus on squat should be a big part. So should hinging, like your Romanian deadlifts, and so should abductions, so that you're getting that full um, work between your your three glute muscles, your med, med, all three, sorry, your glutes, and um, yeah, so really focusing on driving that thrusting and um, bridging home as your priority. Yeah, I, 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 that's the priority, and then from there, like you say, you've got your other three that supplement that. So your squat, your or, squat or lunge, you've got your. Uh, hinge which is your Romanian stiff leg deadlift or um, Romanian deadlift and then the yeah. fourth one is abduction now talk to me a little bit about that because I've seen the machines at the gym that go in and out, <laughs> but mm. as a guy I've never gone near them I don't know what to do with them so yeah I have I they're brilliant by the way <laughs> we actually um, Brett Contreras in the gym one of the things he did with us was um, a drop set on that and I'll tell you what <laughs> It's agony. Um, if you've not been on it as well before, like it, it really does leave you sore for a few days. But with your abductions, you've got like your banded lateral walks, um, crab walks, um, sideline abductions, extra range abductions. There's so many different exercises. And yeah, um, that way you're covering all bases with your glutes. Do you know what I mean? You're targeting from all angles and you're going to get the best benefits. You can't just focus on one aspect without covering all the others. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah completely agree with that and I think one thing that we can just drive home now is at no point have we said that you should focus just on using banded workouts for your glutes as your maybe your favorite Instagram superstar with great glutes albeit is telling you to do instead <laughs> you've spoken about that resistance training across a number of different movement patterns yes there's some banded work in there is the fourth segment but it's so far down the pecking order and it just forms a part of the wider conversation rather than the be all and the end all. So absolutely, people who have been training at home during this COVID period will maybe have been doing a lot of banded stuff, a lot of body weight stuff. And that's fantastic and you can make progress. But clearly when you're thinking about significant hypertrophy and muscle growth of your glutes, we're loading up the, move, we're loading up the movement across a various different uh, motor patterns. And that's what's going to elicit the most growth rather than doing yeah. banded frog pumps for three sets three sets of 10 and thinking that's going to turn you into yeah. Nicki Minaj. Yeah, exactly. You need to be having a good variety in your training. And for me, the priority for muscle growth is obviously resistance training and loading up the weight, progressive overload over time. And that's going to get you the biggest bang for your buck, essentially. Banded work definitely has its place. It's been a big focus in my classes and it definitely helps. But having said that, weight training should be your priority. Um, alongside other things as well, like a lot of people often just go into weight training without like the physical side of just walking more and being cardiovascular active. Do you know what I mean? So don't neglect that side as well. Um, but when it comes to growing your glutes, 100% weight training, progressive overload over time, and that's going to get you. I've seen it in my own training and my own glutes have grown over time, and I've seen it in clients as well. So it yeah. Works. I one of the things we touched on briefly there was that whole underactive glutes. So when you were saying when you got a client to do a bridge for the first time, they were feeling it in their lower back. And 
the vast majority of my listeners will work in nine five jobs or jobs that mean they're sitting down for quite a lot of the day. And I know this myself before I train legs and not just an overall uh, glute focus, I need to do quite a lot of mobility, a little bit of activation. Again, the worst of Instagram is when you see somebody doing like a 35 minute activation workout for their glutes because they've been sleeping while they've been sitting down. Now that's there. There's again, there's always truth to these things, but it's just the extreme end of it. What's a more doable approach and what does a warm up look like for a, an acting coaching client? Right. Brilliant. Yeah. As you've said there with um, being in an office, naturally you'll have underactive weaker glutes. If you sat down more, if you don't get up that often, um, so for me, what you want to be focusing on, if I've got a client just come into the gym, we'll warm up for five minutes, get the blood flowing, just get the body warm. And warming up doesn't mean battering yourself into the ground, like on the rower, the tr- sprints, you know what I mean? It means a steady, low intensity, just get the blood moving. Then we go into five minutes of light activation. That's all it is. And it may be two sets or three sets of 10. We'll, we'll do a little like, circuit so to speak not a circuit but once over we'll go glute bridges into your banded lateral walks into your body weight squats simple as that just loosen up nice and steady we might do some kickbacks or fire hydrants just to get the body moving and really connect with the glutes before we actually start diving into the heavy uh, compound stuff and um, so it's just to lightly activate them nothing too much nothing that's going to um take up energy from that tank for your main session because that's what's important yeah you're kind of priming those muscles ready to go and Mm. like you say it's nothing too taxing you're just and i hate the term waking the glutes up but that's what it is because if 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 a client comes in at six o'clock to you and they've been at their desk nine nine five and then driven home and then driven to the gym yeah exactly their glutes aren't awake and one thing that we'll, we'll, we'll go into is that they are the biggest muscle group in the body. So there's a really compelling case to train them frequently and hard for a multitude of reasons. And I guess off the top of my head straight away, it's calorie burning when it comes to training. So you program them in quite a lot, don't you, for your clients? 100%. Yeah. So if you think about it, the bigger the muscle group, the more calories you're going to burn. So it's a win-win. Not only is having stronger glutes aesthetically pleasing and it looks good to have a big set of glutes, strong set of glutes. You're also burning more calories by by training the glutes because it is your biggest muscle group. They require the biggest workload. So don't forget that. Um, don't neglect that. And that's for guys as well looking for fat loss um, goals or whatever. So don't, don't neglect your glutes, whether you're a guy or female. Yeah, that's so true. And I've certainly been guilty of it in the past when I've, it's not been a, a big focus for me, but I've always had a big focus on hinging movements. So like a, either a conventional deadlift or a stiff leg deadlift, more often than not, I prefer the dumbbell stiff leg deadlift. And you certainly notice it in your posture and your ability to maintain, maintain good form across other movements as well. And, and, that, and that comes into it in terms of that injury prevention piece as well. Yeah, now, yeah. One of the areas I wanted to touch on with you, and, and this is something that brought a bit of a giggle when we've spoken about it previously. I was playing golf with a, a, a mutual friend who was saying, oh, um, you, you know the boys at MTN, you know the girls at MTN as well. Uh, how does that Ryan get away with training just girls? And I said, oh, what, 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 what do you mean? And he, <laughs> said, and, and he, and he said, oh, how, how, does he, how, does he, um, how does he just train girls and, and his... And, and like not be like kind of like grafting them and whatnot and I was like oh I, 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 I think I think you've got the wrong end of the stick here so do you want to address the professionalism that needs to come into being the glute guy because that's 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 where your brand's going the glute guy for how to get better glutes as a female in Glasgow in Scotland in the UK what does that look like in terms of that professionalism that offering and, and from how you come across in the podcast so far, I think everyone already knows the answer to this. Yeah, I suppose it comes down to respect and, and knowing what I want, really. Um, I want results from this. I want girls to progress. I want them to feel better and live better in themselves. And for me to ever jeopardise that would just be stupid. And I think as a personal trainer, being a professional as well as a trainer and a coach is so important. Like, you like how hard is it for someone to just send over a progress photo never mind 
you having access to that and then probably a lot of PTs will well they should be asking can I like use that for social media they should be asking um you've got a you've got to have a professionalism about you you can't just do you know what I mean yeah you've got to make them comfortable um so exactly. the, it's just, it's just, it's the same for, for 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 guys as well when they share their photos with their coach they want to feel comfortable that it's been looked at in the right way and it's been used in the right way for comparisons and you can always have like rules with how the how the photos are presented and sent across so that it stays comfortable and one of the things we touched on is obviously you're in a, a long-term relationship so it, it's probably helpful for some girls to be reassured that the relationship will, will always remain professional even if you were single you would expect that to be the case as well but ultimately your girlfriend needs to be comfortable they need to be comfortable and it's a it's a professionalism piece that you've spoken about yeah, I think it's just having that understanding between us. Like, this is my passion. This is where I'm heading. This is the goals I want to hit. I want to help as many people as possible. Um, and right now I'm getting results with female clients. And this is my passion to really drive this home and get the best. Now, glutes transformations as well, which obviously is probably even more daunting because it's your glutes. Do you know what I mean? And you need to see the progress. So, um, but for me, I'll always, always stay true to who I am and be professional and um, really drive home my goals, to be honest. My focus is my goals and helping as many people as possible. And I'd never jeopardize that. So having a supporting network behind me, Louise, um, who understands that is really helpful. Do you know what I mean? Having someone there who says, go out and achieve your goals. And um, yeah. You've got that respect for, for, for her as well yeah, and for respect. your clients. So that's the, all, that's the all important thing. So I guess we've spoken a lot around, around glute training and all your clients, I think, for, for clarity, aren't just going in and training glutes, which I think is super important because you do get girls that do just go to the gym. Maybe they go once or twice a week and it is just they go in and they hip thrust or they do a banded crab walk yeah. um, for their entire session, which, isn't, which obviously is far from what, what we've been advocating today. What other programming considerations do you take into account to work alongside the, the glutes? Yeah, so something I've done in my ebook actually. So recommended wise, I'd say two to three times a week training your glutes. So your biggest muscle group, they can take a lot of beating, essentially, they can take a lot of damage. So um I would recommend say say you're doing three glute sessions a week, then programming two upper body sessions. But you've got to remember everyone's got different lifestyles. So can you actually commit to five sessions a week? Not everyone can. Some people can only do three. So if it's three, then you've got to consider combining your glutes and your upper sessions together, maybe supersetting a hip thrust with a bent over row, things like that. So I've put that all into my ebook as well, how to do that. Um, do it based on your lifestyle. Most of my clients, well, all my clients come to me twice a week, but in general, outside of that, they train two or three times a week. Um, so that's usually a good aim for most people. I know people that like train six at times a week some people that train two and then you're probably looking at full body sessions for those two but do it based on your lifestyle what works for you i think that's such an important point and one of the good things about when you train glutes is more often than not regardless of whether which one of the four movement patterns you're doing you're hitting your quads your hamstrings and you're like so some of your glute days will almost be a leg day just based on the fact oh, that yeah. you've you've you've, you've, tr you've trained those kind of big heavy movements and yeah. they will be really taxing because what you've hammered home throughout this, which is so important, is it's a progressive overload of a hard movement. It's not a it's it's not light stuff that you can recover from instantly. So training it two or three two, two or three days a week is going to be tough, but it's got the frequency there to, to to drive muscle growth. Exactly, and I would focus on as well. Uh, there's different ways you can go about it, whether that be one's your heavy day, one's a moderate day, one's a lighter, higher rep focus day. So there's different ways you can go about it. And obviously, initially, if you're new to glutes training, you may get sore. That That's normal um, initially. And, and as you progress, things will get a little bit easier, so to speak. But yeah, focusing on those um, three glute sessions, you, you will recover quite quickly after you've had a couple of weeks settling in. Um, as I said, they are the biggest muscle group and the recovery rate is pretty damn high. So, yeah. Yeah, and one of the things that I think we, we maybe brushed over a little bit at the start is the fact that you've invested so much, for example, going all the way to the, the Glute Lab in San Diego, when it comes to understanding your niche is very important because 
for all the majority of my audience are um, nine five workers or uh, young professionals. There'll be a number of PTs listening as well or thinking like, oh, maybe I can specialize in, in this area or that area. But there comes into it a level of investment in order for you to be credible in doing that. And it's the same for me in the, in the insurance broking industry. I specialize in retail mostly for clients. So I understand what the risks are to a retail client. I understand what the risks are to a construction client. But if you put me in front of a, a manufacturing client of a, of a product that I've never seen before, I would, I would need to do a lot of research to give them a credible job. So it would be the same for you if you decided to be like, oh, I'm going to go into, I'm going to be the, the guy that grows guys' arms. And there's people like that. There's, there's, there's guys that are like, oh, I'm the, I'm the arms coach. And that's, that's yeah. fine. But what was some of the stuff alongside your glute lab, that you, uh, visit to the glute lab that you've invested in for being this expert? So I think if I go back to when I first started, obviously you get your PT qualification. I've done the women's fitness and fat loss specialisms as well on top of that. Um, they're pretty standard, as probably most PTs will tell you. They're quite easy to pass, albeit a small financial investment. Um, and then I actually, as we touched on earlier in the podcast, on sales being the first stage, um, I actually bought Mark Cole's um, five-stage sales formula i think it was called um done that and just investing in courses throughout um and my own learning going back to the beginning as well um podcasts and things like that actually just starting off from scratch i remember getting up at half four every day and listening to mark cole's number one right through to like 200 or whatever it was going and training my first client at half five till half six, coming back for breakfast, then going to work at eight till four. On my dinner at work, I was reading and studying courses, and then I'd come back, train clients, until I eventually went full-time, obviously. So it's just investing in your own personal development and learning uh, certificates and qualifications that you can get are all great. Um, one thing I'll probably invest in next, maybe as a mentor, um, been speaking to a couple of people but that's probably my next step but um yeah like people who've further on on the journey who know the path already where i should be heading um but yeah just really diving in deep on yourself and personal development is massive i think yeah you can see that's reflected in the in the service you give your clients and like we said already the free information you give away has been gained over the years through you investing and then you're relaying that to your clients with your take on it that's, that's registering with them and obviously is given the, the engagement and the growth that you get. And I think that's a really helpful insight, albeit a very short one, into what it requires for you to do that kind of side hustle alongside your working job before you're able to take that step in terms of that investment where in your downtime or the time when you're getting up and getting things ready, you're cooking food or you're, you're, you're out walking, you've got those sources in your ear that are yeah. leveling you up yeah massively like i remember being in the pre my previous job and every lunch i was out on a walk and i was listening to a podcast like without fail and that was just my drive to get, eventually get full time do you know what i mean um, and start working for myself full time so i think you've got to have that commitment to yourself and realize that you can't just jump into the job and expect it to go really well you've got to focus on self development and invest in yourself. When we went to America, that was a big investment to go all the way over there, go to a five-day speaking event and visit the glute lab and, and learn, do you know what I mean? So Yeah, and that, that, that's been reflected now. You guys are now the biggest transformation service in Scotland, so uh, as, 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 as a team combined. So that adds up to when the three of you have gone and done that. The last thing you touched on was looking for a mentor who has got that kind of roadmap to get where you want to go. And that's been such a common theme throughout the podcast, all the successful people that we've had on to speak about the different areas that they work in, whether that's been copywriting or marketing or personal training or coaching. One of the common themes is I'm willing to invest my time and my money in speaking to somebody who's that little bit further ahead, maybe a couple of steps, maybe three steps, maybe just one step who can show me how to get there. And it's really refreshing that even at the stage you're at where you, by all accounts, have a very successful business, financially this year will have been very good for you despite the the, the, the lockdown yeah. but you're still willing to take that next step to say right I'm not done yet yeah exactly I think that stems back to even before I became a personal trainer just even having the guts and just 
put yourself out there to ask questions. I can't recommend enough just asking questions. If I didn't speak to my girlfriend who recommended speaking to David, and then if I didn't get in contact with David, would I have actually been in this? Do you know what I mean? It's like one of those um, things where you'll never know unless you ask. And yeah, as you said there, my next step, definitely. I've got so much more to learn. Like I'm always learning and I want to learn so much more and I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I still see myself like I've got like so much like further to go in my business. Potential. I'm just, yeah, potential. I'm just scratching the surface really. And I'm now at a point where I've, I've done my eBooks. I've um, had my classes. I've had a fully booked one-to-one diary. I've had my online classes really successful, online coaching with MTN. So it's like, right, I'm at a stage now where what's my next step? And I've been, obviously I had time to think throughout lockdown. And one of those is definitely to invest in a mentor um, who's, who's big in the UK and um, can help me on that next step, definitely. That's really exciting, Ryan. What are the different ways that people can work with you? And let's just summarize it in one little section, because I know you've mentioned eBooks, you mentioned online coaching, you mentioned one-to-one. So you're based in Free Fit Paisley at the moment? Free Fit Paisley, yep. Yeah. Um, a small um, warehouse type gym just on Clark Street. Um, so that's for one-to-one. Um, so they, they can contact me on Instagram or email through my website for one-to-one coaching. Um, I'll be running group training, which will be glute specific, um, and that will be twice a week. So that's going to get initiated probably a couple of weeks after gyms do reopen. Um, I run my Saturday classes, not sure how that will work with social distancing, um, but hopefully we'll get that back up and running again soon. Um, I've got my ebook online, glutes ebook, and I've got a fat loss ebook as well. Fat loss ebook was really, really done really well, was really successful. So hopefully the same with the glutes ebook, and um, that will relaunch again just before the gyms open. And let me think what else. My online glutes classes, that's five. Um, so that's all acting coaching. And then I've got my online coaching. I work with MTN coaching, um, David and Dale and the rest of the team um, there. So there's lots of ways to get involved with us, albeit we do have a big waiting list. Yeah, so. agreed. In terms, in terms of um, that wide offering, though, I think that's super important because it gives people different tiers. And again, I'm thinking of my sales hat on. You've got the different options because there might be somebody whose budget is fifty pounds, and they say they yeah. can they, they they can look at one of those options, or it might be somebody's budget is really more substantial and they want to work with you one to one on a for for six months, and they think that's yeah. what I need to, to to move forward. So there's lots of different options there. Hopefully you've all enjoyed the podcast so far. I certainly have. Ryan, what is your social handles? And I'll pop them in the in the show notes. Yeah, so it's at Atkin Coaching. Easy as that. And Instagram's yeah. the best place for you. Facebook as well. Yeah. Instagram, no, I'm not really Facebook, to be honest. Um, I have got a business page on there, but it's Instagram's my priority. Yeah, so Instagram at Atkin Coaching. I think we're all the same. We've all, all our Instagram posts just automatically shared over onto Facebook. Being <laughs> on there. And then you forget and you're like, oh. <laughs> thanks, very much for, thanks very much for coming on, Ryan. Massive thank you to everyone that's listened up this up to this point. If you've enjoyed it, take a screenshot, pop it in your Instagram story, tag Ryan, tag myself, drop us your feedback. And if there's somebody out there that's got a bit of a pancake bump, make sure to send them this episode so they can get on that glute training Speak to you all again very, very soon.